Hello, and welcome to Learning with the Fosters. Or, I guess I should say, Foster Learning. Last night, my dad uh, talked with Damaris and I, and he had a great idea, I thought, we thought, for this little endeavor, this little project. Rather than entitling it Learning with the Fosters, our last name is Foster, rather Foster Learning. And we thought that was great, kind of the play on the words with Foster Learning, Develop Learning, Nurture Learning, um, you get the point. So we think that was a fabulous idea. So we are now Foster Learning. I wish you would have let us know this a few days before, before we shot all the opening videos and introductory matters. Now we have to go through and change everything on the website and things like that. But still, it was a good, uh, a good, a great suggestion. So thank you, Dad. Love you very much. And this would be a great time, I guess, to also thank um, our friends and family um, who have been so supportive on this, both in the mainland um, of the U.S. and also our friends and family of a different nature here on the beautiful island of Puerto Rico, where it's a beautiful rainy day in Cabo Rojo, Puerto Rico, where Demaris and I live. It's a nice, cozy day to talk about my favorite subject, my passion, mathematics. And this is what I wish to do today, to introduce to you Foster Learning's um, series, If I Can Learn Math, You Can Learn Math. Now, we'll talk about that title um, to conclude this introduction. But first, let's get straight to the point and address some of the logistic concerns. Our cat Woodstock's chasing imaginary <laughs> items on the floor right in front of me. Um, for this particular series, if I can learn math, you can learn math, my primary role will be the instructor. Demaris' primary role will be the student. Um, and together we're both um, in, in instructing and in teaching and um, learning and presenting work. I think we'll have a, a great time with this course. So. Initially, my immediate goals as to kind of the development of these, as all of these courses are, are, are new, we're, we're uh, putting them together as we're going. We don't have them prepackaged and already done. We've been thinking about this and working on this for some time. And one thing about myself is I'm, I'm fairly unrealistic with time. So initially I have all these ideas about all these different math courses and classes that I want to do. And that's a great thing, but realistically with time, you kind of have to limit your scope somewhat. So my initial goal, and this is still a large goal, perhaps uh, still unrealistic for the time frame in which I wish to get them done with, will essentially constitute some basic mathematics anywhere from kind of the high school or perhaps the more advanced high school level up through the first few years of a typical undergrad mathematics um, program. And then from there we can get into some more exciting things. But let's quickly point out kind of my plan thus far, as I'll be the sole instructor on this, of my plan of how I am going to, or the order in which I'm going to prepare these courses. And each of these courses will have all sorts of different you know, units and lessons within them, but this is kind of the, the, the focus in which I will be preparing these. Another thing about myself is I cannot multitask. I, my mind is set on one thing, so it's hard for me to kind of do multiple courses all at once, although I will attempt to do that um, as we progress. But first, our focus is going to be on what essentially is pre-calculus. Skills, algebra, and trigonometry um, together collectively kind of get you ready to do calculus among, along with some other topics. And this is the first course in which we will be working through. So if you're interested in that, um, that is what we will actually, with the, the next video, we will be introducing that course as we've kind of outlined it. After that course, I wish to move on to the calculus and beginning calculus. Essentially, if um, what is usually deemed calculus one, two, and three, concluding with multivariable calculus. Um, well, we're going to lump it all into one course without losing much content. I think we'll still get about three course worths material in it, but I'm going to kind of string it along and arrange it in, in slightly different ways. After calc then I hope to be able to work on at least a few different things at once. We'll look at some elementary differential equations for a course and also some linear algebra as a course. Once I get done with this kind of seed and this growth, the next thing I, I plan on, on working on is a geometry-based course. And within that, we'll be looking at the typical Euclidean geometry, kind of that uh, geometry that you either loved or hated in, in high school, kind of working with flat surfaces. But then also in we'll have a separate course on modern or non-Euclidean geometry. And there's a lot of fun stuff that we'll talk about there. Within this geometry block or this, this series of courses, I'm also going to incorporate a lot of history and philosophy, both the history of mathematics, the history 
and philosophy of mathematics, but also how mathematics has influenced philosophy, and more particularly the history of philosophy within, uh, we'll focus mainly on Western civilization. And it's, it's quite an interesting story, and it's hard to detach entirely the history and the influence of geometry and the evolution of it um, from history and philosophy and the history of philosophy. It's quite fascinating. In fact, personally, this is what got me interested in pursuing math, or at least a very large part of it was um, through the study of philosophy, or more precisely, the study of the history of philosophy. As I, as I saw how some of these geometric problems, uh, one in particular, really influenced philosophy and the history of, of how that developed within mostly the, water, the Western tradition. So this is probably kind of the, the block that I'm the most excited about. But I want to get through this stuff first, which is also very exciting. Um, then after that, the next kind of section I want to get into, offer a series of courses on basic probability theory. Um, I love to play cards, used to love to gamble a lot, and so we'll have some good times with this as well. Then some basic uh, statistics, and then possibly, depending on how things go, um, some basic stochastic modeling as well. It'll be a good introdu introduction to modeling phenomena with mathematics and um, a natural way to incorporate some of this probability and statistics that we'll be learning about. This was one of my favorite uh, courses that I had the privilege of taking at in, in college at uh, the University of Montana Western. I guess this would be a great time to plug the University of Montana Western, a fabulous university with an incredible staff and faculty, um, and in particular mathematics department. Uh, Thank you guys for all your help uh, um, with both Demarius and I from our time spent at the University of Montana Western. If you're looking for a great university, I highly recommend you check that out. Okay, so that's kind of the, the mode forward in which we're, we're, we're heading towards. And as you can see, a lot of these, even the verbiage I'm kind of using to describe them or title them, is very typical as to how these courses are described or kind of outlined again in high school and the first few years or so of an undergrad uh, math program. After this, I do plan on offering a lot of courses after this, and this is where we can get into some more kind of interesting and I think uh, funner um, topics and courses that we can explore. But these are very essential, very foundational, and they are incredibly important. We'll talk more about the importance of the foundation with our next uh, video as I introduce our pre-calc course, which will be the first course we, we work through together. Okay, so that's kind of where we're headed, or at least that's my plan right now, as I've kind of narrowed down some of the other things that I wanted to, to include in this to attempt to make it as realistic and feasible as possible. Okay, so the name. If I can learn math, you can learn math. And this is going to be the overarching head umbrella for all the math courses that I offer here at Foster Learning. And the name is intentional. It's not, I don't know if it's entirely catchy. I think it kind of is, but I think it's more entirely true. Um, let me give you a little bit of an introduction about myself and my mathematical experience or career, career not, career defined very loosely. Um, I was never interested in math. I was a good student um, up until about, well, almost through the end of junior high. I was a good, I was an okay math student up until about halfway through sixth grade. But I never liked math. It was always one of my least favorite subjects, that and literature or English. And ironically, those are the two uh, areas that I studied later on in, in college. But math was never... In, I was never instinctively good at it. I never cared about it. I, I, I did okay when I was younger simply because I had, I had good parents who encouraged me to try hard and uh, you know put forth my best foot, etc. And they helped me out a lot. And actually, in retrospect, if I could pull in Uncle Rico and go back in time, one thing I definitely would do would be a much better student consistently on. I wish I would have taken my parents' and others' advice that school is not just important, not just to be able to go get a job and go to college and those type of things, which it is, but more importantly, the things that I could have learned, I think I could have really been a lot better person in all sorts of different areas um, and aspects of my life if I would have taken advantage of the opportunity to have an education. But anyway, for whatever reason, about halfway through sixth grade, I kind of officially decided I don't care about math, and my math grades started slipping, and I did just enough to pass. I still had high marks and things like history because I was more interested in that. But by the time high school hit, 
my I had kind of officially decided that I was kind of done being a good student, although I still managed to pass and actually have decent grades, but the effort was just not there. And math was at the bottom of my list, the bottom of my interest, the bottom of my priority. Well, this continued through till till college. In fact, my first uh, uh, college math experience, and my last until much later on in life, was a probability course that I had. And this, I think, will demonstrate um, my accomplishments or my lack of accomplishments in mathematics up to that point. The whole highlight of that class was not that I learned anything, but there was a girl that I thought was cute at the time, so I decided to walk into class and play a song to her on my guitar in front of the whole class midway through. And, well, this was the, rea the reaction I got. So I didn't get a date out of it, and I certainly didn't learn a darn thing in math throughout that course. Kind of the, the, the rock bottom, if you will, of um, ever being interested or pursuing mathematics. So I bring that story up because if I can learn math, as that story I think illustrates uh, kind of pictorially how bad of a student I was, how little I cared, I was not one of these you know, kids who was always good at math and always took all the advanced courses. I wasn't. I was everything opposite. Um, and it kind of was epitomized with my, my uh, first college math class where I played a song to a girl and didn't get a date and didn't do very well in the class either. Well, fast forward almost a decade or, or a little bit after that, um, to make a very long story short, I ended up um, traveling a lot, ending up in Puerto Rico, beautiful Puerto Rico, and meeting the love of my life, Damaris, whom you all have met thus far. And all of a sudden we moved back to Montana and I enrolled back in school and I decided something, something amazing. Um, as I went through these, the, my remaining classes for my degree, I figured out that I really liked learning, that I, I could do it and that I, I really enjoyed it. Well, I was studying literature at the time, I just had a few classes to kind of finish up. After that, after I graduated, I got a job at the university, um, thank you Mike Pizzola, and then a little bit later I said, man, I, I was talking to Marius one night, I was like, man, I wish, and this was after studying some history and philosophy and I noticed how important mathematics was. I said, man, I wish I would have gone back in time and I wish I could have, again, Uncle Rico did, and I would have studied mathematics. And Damari said, well, why don't you do that? So I did. So I, I quit my job at the university and, and enrolled again as an as a undergrad in mathematics. At this time, I did well. I, did, I, I, I was able to learn math. So the point of this, if I can learn math, which I am learning math, I'm still learning math, I think the more I learn, probably a lot of folks can attest to this, the more you learn about something, particularly in mathematics, the more you realize that you don't know. The more you, the more you learn, the more you realize there, are so, there is so much more to learn. So I am learning math. So if I, that horrible math student, who, whose only highlight in math class was singing a song to a, a girl in class, if that guy can end up going back to school much later on in life and be able to learn math, well, if I can do it, which I am doing, then you can. I'm absolutely convinced of that. Uh, one of my math professors actually said one time that there's kind of a misconception about math, that you have to be kind of this um, Einsteinian type genius who just, you know, kind of um, just instinctively can go kind of and solve problems and all these type of things. He said, that's not true. Sure, there are people that way, but anybody can learn math. And I agree very strongly with him on that. I won't go so far as, let's use music as an example. Some people are just naturally good musicians. Um, no matter how much I, who am not a natural musician, practice, I can definitely learn chords, I can learn music theory, I can learn these things, and I can learn to play, but I will never have that instinctive you know, musicality about it, who's, you know, just brings the music to life and all these different things. I'm not saying we can all go and become the next great famous mathematician, but what I am saying is we can all learn math, at least learn more than we do now, and really the sky is the limit to, I think, what we can learn when we put our minds to it. Um, so I hope that's encouraging. I hope this title is encouraging. If I can learn math, then you can learn math. It's a conditional statement. If I can learn math, which I am learning math, then I really believe that you can too. Um, math kind of has a stigma that it's, it's only, it's only, and this is the way I thought of it, it's kind of only for those math 
people who are just whatever for whatever reason inertly born mathematical geniuses and there certainly are some people like that but it's not that way it's a very practical discipline um, it's beautiful it's actually quite artistic I think and it's very very interesting and very very important so I think the key for me was of course of course first having a supporting and loving wife who's changed my life for the better in all in every aspect of life but having the desire to learn math to become interested to to tackle it not because I had to take it because it was part of my curriculum but rather because I realized for myself historically how important it was you may realize practically um, in day-to-day -day experience or you may uh, it, it, it disperses in all sorts of disciplines. My wife is an artist, a professional artist, and it's amazing how math has influenced art and art has influenced mathematics in different ways. So whatever you're interested in or your passion is, if you look close enough, there is a golden thread that does relate with mathematics, as most subjects, as most disciplines do relate in those ways. Um, so I think math is, is no other exception. Hello, Sophia. So I was not let me just reiterate, I was not the best math student. I'm still not the best math student. In fact, far from it. Most of my peers I studied with were much better at math. For one, they were much younger and they had, they had learned this stuff you know, a lot closer to than when I entered it. But also they were just more, to put it bluntly, gifted. They understood math. Math made sense to them instinctively a lot better than it did to me. But I was able to learn because I worked hard at it. I found the value in it. It captivated me. It still captivates me. There's so much truth that I think mathematics can teach us about all, so many different areas in life and reality and, and all these different things that it's, it's fascinating. And I think once you get to that point, no matter what background you have, if it was like mine, very little in math, a very long time since I studied math and very, 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 very long time since I actually paid attention in a math class, even if you come from that background, which I think a lot of us do, I am convinced that math can be interesting, it is interesting, and it is it can be very accessible, but it does require a lot of hard work. And so that's what um, we will be doing together. Our, my goal is to guide you through some of these basic mathematical um, concepts and problems and, and some of the glorious history that surrounded it. And But in the end, you'll get out of it what you put into it, which is so true with so much of life. We'll talk a little bit more about that specifically with our pre-calc course next video. But in short, I'm very excited about this. I love math, I'm very interested in math. I'm not that good at math, but I work hard at math. So, if I can learn math, then I really believe you can learn math as well. I look forward to seeing you later.